Welcome everyone, my name is Paula Phillips, also known as Journal Artista, and I'm here today with a YouTube dedicated video for you guys, hopefully it's in HD, I'm using my uh, proper camera here. Um, I'm going to do a, a little technique that I call crusty bits. This is a, uh, a technique used with the jelly plate, the jelly arts, jelly print, gel printing plate. It's a uh, mono printing. I guess I should not have attached that, not attached it, set it on my jelly plate. But this is what it looks like after. This is what actually what it looks like after it's been used a few times. Uh, well loved. I don't clean my jelly plate completely off. Um, but we'll go into that later. So check them out, Jelly Arts. This is the 12 by 14 inch plate. They come in lots of different sizes. And here we go. So before I get started, I'll show some of the prints that uh, that I have done in the past oh couple weeks, I'd say. I did some last night on my live Ustream show. Check me out over at Ustream.tv. I'm Journal Artista over there. So these are one print um what I'm going to teach you today is a technique to get these prints with one pull. They're not layered pulls is what I'm trying to say off your plate. Um, I have a little, I like to call them crusty bits. Any little dried up stuff, paint on your plate, shouldn't say stuff, acrylic paint on my plate is called a crusty bit. I call them crusty bits. So I am creating um, a whole bunch of crusty bits and that's what these pulls are. Some other people call these cleanup prints. Um, I think there's other terms that other people use, but it's it's getting you know dried paint and the leftover stuff off your plate. So there's lots of cool things. You know the jelly the jelly plate. There are so many techniques and so many ways you can use it, and so many variables that it just honestly never gets old for me. And all the years that I've scrapbooked and, and rubber stamped before that and all the tools I've bought in the last, I don't know, you know, 20, almost 20 years. This is one tool that I must say that I have not gotten. It's not, I've had it for over two years. Well, I had a smaller one first. Um, it has not gotten old. So we can use some stencils. We can use uh, texture plates, uh, all different things. Any way that you normally remove paint. Uh, when you're jelly plating, that's what we're, that's what you can use today. So there's a couple of examples. I should move a little faster. I'm going to turn these into a book probably tomorrow, maybe later today. I've already used some of that, as you can see, tore it off. So hope you uh, follow along and create some nice crusty bits of your own. It's also, you can, you can print the same way on deli paper. With this technique, sometimes the paint doesn't absorb into it as, you know, obviously as much as it does on regular cardstock. You can see there. Um, but we shall do that as well. All right. So the first step, one thing about, you know, I'm an art journaler and I've art, been art journaling for a while. And for me, my thought process has always been how to build backgrounds from bottom up. Right. What's the first layer? The first layer I need to put down is the is, you know, the one that's obscured the most. But with mono printing with your jelly plate, you have to you have to think I have to think the opposite way. The first layer I put down is the top layer. Right. Here's an example here. The first layer I put down is the top layer that I want to see on my print. Right. For example, this black. There's multiple layers on this on this print, but the first layer is going to be what you see on top completely opposite of what I've been doing backgrounds in art journaling. So it took me a while to figure out this bad boy. And because there's so many variations, guys, don't give up variables. I should say, don't give up when you're using your, your mono, your jelly print, your jelly plate, mono print, mono printing. And then when I start adding deli paper into the mix, deli, jelly, mono, I get even more confused. All right, so I'm going to take some Liquitex Basics. This happens to be Mars Black. Um, I like to start with the darkest. Ooh, those are some crusty bits. Okay, so sometimes when my crusty bits turn into flakes, that's when it's bad news. You got to take them off your plate. <laughs> crusty flakes, bad news. Okay, so I do really like the distressed kind of look of black being that top layer. So I'm going to use some black. 
if you've been watching my Ustream, I've also been using a student grade Rayotech. Um, it's made by it's made by TriArt, and uh, which is a Canadian company. So I put a little bit of black. And as I was saying before, there's so many variables. The amount of paint you put on your plate is definitely one of them. Um, you know, having too much paint can be a problem. Having not enough paint can be a problem. So don't just, you know, don't give up, guys. Keep trying it and, and watch, you know, you can watch me here how much how much paint I'm either removing or take or putting on, and that might help you as well. But the thickness of your paint is very uh, important. All right. But really, it can only take practice, you, can, you know, to get better. Okay, so I've got some black on my plate. I'm going to start with some stencils. So some of my favorite stencils are by the wonderful Patty Tolly Parrish, who is Inky Obsessions here on YouTube. These are made uh, from eye stencils, and as you can see, this is how much I like them. They are full of crusty bits. I have to bake, give them a bath here shortly. Okay, so because I have the 12 by 14 plate, I can use two, um, two stencils there. And there's, you know, a couple different ways. You can just use some deli paper to remove some of this paint. You can use maybe, I don't have any clothes. Do I have any clothes? You can use something that already has a bit of something. That's just a brayer off. That was a, not, a, not a very exciting choice. But remember, so these two choices actually were 110 pound cardstock. So, and there's a little deli paper. I'm just cleaning off the paint off the top of my plate here where the stencils don't quite reach. So I'm trying to remove a bunch of the black, right? With this technique, I want to, you know, again, the black is what's going to be on top. And... Oh, that didn't go so well. Don't get me wrong. It's not that it didn't go so well because it's because that paper's a little thick. It's it's sometimes you have to take some time to push it through the openings of the stencil. For the sake of YouTube video, I shall go to deli paper. And remove some. Alright, so I'm trying to get the black. You can see that now. My jelly plate, and once I remove this, you'll see it even better here. That all I'm left, all the paint is really on these bad boys, but all I'm left is just kind of a slight, a little bit of black left over. And I've got a lot of space, a lot of that empty space, which is what we need, uh, what we want, excuse me, for the next few layers. So can't take your heat gun to your jelly plate could cause a fire that would be bad news but I do have a hair dryer with a cool button cool shot button so that's what I'll be using to dry this now it's very important that this layer and all the layers that I'm going to be doing today before the final pull is dry before we put on the next layer of paint so hair dryer Now, as I was saying before, if you can check out Jelly Art's YouTube channel, and, you know, there are so many different techniques. This is just one in a whole bunch. But, you know, I got a little frustrated with my, with my jelly plating experience at the beginning because I was getting a lot of prints that had a lot of white space. And in my art journaling or, or the art that I like to make, I'm not big on white space. That's just my, uh, that's just my thing right now. So I figured out this technique, it probably took me a few years, and I went from liking two out of jelly print pulls, the model print pulls, to, you know, um, nine or ten out of ten jelly print pulls. So I hope you'll enjoy this too. Now it'll depend on how humid it is where you are, or not humid it is where you are, lack of humidity, uh, to how long it's going to take for your paint to dry. But it's very important. So this is why, again, this is why I'm calling crust, why I call it crusty bits, because all these, this paint is drying on your plate and becoming a little crusty. But I promise, crusty bits are beautiful. 
So I just kind of tap it with my hand to see if I, as you can see, I've already been doing some jelly plating today. Um, I'm just tapping my hand to make sure it's dry. You really don't want to rush that step. If you, step, if you don't have a hair dryer, you know, you can fan yourself. It's hotter. It's really hot where I'm from right now. Humid, I should say, more than hot. So you know, sometimes it's good to just fan it, fan yourself, fan the plate, fan yourself. You know how it goes. Okay, so the next color, I think I'm going to use one of my favorite colors and a lot of my friends' favorite colors as well. Bright aqua green, Liquitex Basics. Now I'm using a lot of Liquitex Basics today, but you know, you can use craft paint, whatever acrylic paint you got going on. It's uh, it's all good. You can also put more than one color down at a time. But, you know, for simplicity, for some reason, I seem to like just one color. So um, that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just quickly taking a baby wipe to my brayer to get off some of that black paint. So as, you know, so I won't, I won't get a muddy looking green color here. It may not be perfect, but, uh, and I, because I let all of my, my paint dry on my jelly plate, I'm not going as fast. You know, some techniques... You don't want the paint to dry, so you gotta, you know, gotta be a little bit faster. But for me, for what I'm doing, it doesn't matter. All right. So another thin layer of paint. I'm not sure. I'm hoping you guys can already see. There's some of that stuff. Some of the um, we can see some of the tribal squares when a Patty Tolly Parish stencils. MyStencils.com. I can start seeing them come up. And now I'm going to take my second set of stencils. And I like to use the second set of stencils I like to use have more openings, right? Um, larger openings in the design is what I'm trying to say. This is another Patty stencil called Argyle from MyStencils.com. Uh, again, another one of my favorites, as you can see. It is just awesome. This one is called Pyramid. All right, so this step, now we got to be careful. We got black underneath, right? And you know that when you put another wet layer of paint on top of, of uh, dried paint on your jelly plate, you might pull some of it up. So all I'm just do really lightly, guys. I just want to remove some of the, the green paint, but I, you know, you're going to get some of the black crusty bits coming up, but I want to save those for the final pull, right? The final print. So I'm just lightly, and I'm using deli paper that, you know, may or may not be used for something else, uh, mostly for the demo here. You can, you can use some deli paper or, or paper you got going on that already has a few layers as to not waste, to waste any of this delicious paint. All right. So again, I'm going to remove this and, and then talk about it. So again, I now have spaces. Can you guys see? There's some clear spaces. And if I'm real careful and flip over my jelly plate, you can see what we've got going on so far. Oh, it's going to be a good one, my friends. I can feel it. Oh, I got fingerprints. That's okay. That's all right. So I like to leave it thicker in some spots, you know real thin in other spots so then we put when I put my final color on the third color to do the cleanup print or, or the last pull um, you'll be able to see all the colors that we've put on the plate black green and the next one will be pink so hair dryer cool again very important cool shot and this <clears throat> again it's very important that you don't wash this drying step um, because what happens is if, if there's still a bit of wet paint, right, on this middle layer, for example, and you put your third color on and try a pull, it won't pick up all three layers. So it's a very important to make sure every layer is dry. I'm not, it, you know, not to say that it would be a bad print, it would just be different. It would just be different. So I like to take my time. 
The worst part about it is my hair dryer, the spool shop button, I have to hold it down the whole time. Sometimes I gotta like double fist it over here. <laughs> I think I, uh, but again, you don't want to use heat because you don't want to set your jelly plate on fire. But lots of times I can see where, you know, especially where it's thick right here. Sometimes I may just go over and dab a little bit of it off with my deli paper. If it's too thick, or we might be here all day. But, you know, I am the type that don't edit my videos. What you see is what you get, because I want you guys to see the good, the bad, and the ugly. And also, if I edit it out, how long it takes for me to dry these things, or you know, rubber print or whatever. Lots of times, but those, the length of time I'm drying something is very important to the final product, to the end product, right? So you can always use the fast forward button on, on the bottom. But again, very important that it's dry. So I just use my fingers. I can tell it's sticky over here. In fact, I could leave it a little sticky on this side to show you what happens if you don't completely dry it. But it's pretty much almost done. All right, so final third layer. And no one, you know, there there is no rule to how many layers you can you can dry on your plate. But I like the three. I like the black and two contrasting type colors and um and a couple different stencil prints i think that's i think that's a good uh balance all right so i'm looking for some pink okay one of my favorite pink colors is medium magenta by liquitex basics same thing so this again is the is the last print some people call it the cleanup print uh, because I'm putting a full layer of paint on here and then pulling it. We're going to be putting cardstock, blank cardstock on here and pulling it all up. So this layer of paint is important. Um, the thickness of this third layer of paint, the last layer, your cleanup print, is, is very important. You know, if you use a little bit too much paint, what's going to happen is that it won't you know, it's not going to pull everything up from the bottom again. So you want it to kind of be a thin, a thin layer. You want to be able to see some of the stuff going on underneath. You don't want to be so thin that, you know, it may not pick anything up, but, uh, maybe I need to add a little bit more right there. And then we'll put on our print and we're Oh, I can't wait to see how this is. I'm telling you, model printing with a jelly plate never gets old for me. Okay, so I've got 110 pound cardstock here from Staples. You can use any paper. So I'm just laying it down because it's the 12 by 14 jelly plate. I do two sheets of eight and a half by 11, but once I'm gonna take my deli paper or whatever scrap paper you got going on and I do remove a little bit of the paint from the top and the bottom of my plates. You could print, of course, if you have a larger jelly plate like this onto 12 by 12 paper, cardstock, <clears throat> or whatever your heart, little heart desires to be printing on. All right, so this is important. What's happening now is that that last layer of paint, the pink that I put down, is you know seeping into the fibers of the paper, drying into the fibers of the paper and as it's drying it's picking up all those other yummy layers crusty bits as I like to say from our jelly plate so it's important you got to massage it right you want to make sure that every bit every um all that goodness comes up some people use, you can use a brayer, sometimes I do, you know, but that 
may or may not damage your jelly plate if you know there's something on it but obviously you know I'm not my jelly plate <laughs> I love and 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 use my jelly plate so um you know it's not in the most pristine condition okay so what you can do is take a peek oh I see but I can take a peek and see that it's easily pulling off my plate oh this is gonna be good my friends look at those crusty bits excuse the shadow from my camera look at that Woohoo! and what I do you know I'm pulling two prints you know what I end up doing is then the next time I the next print I pull I just pull it on the other side um, I do a full page and then another half page and I merge the two but look at that yum oh so see the black that's on top and we can see the tribal river stencil from Patty Tolly Parish and we can see the uh, <clears throat> Argyle so let's check out this one again you can take a little peek that's easily coming off Oh boy, oh boy. Woo! Yum oh. Like I said, I hope that you enjoy uh you enjoyed this video and you try this crusty bit technique as I like to call it, building dried layers of paint on your plate and pulling them off in all one go. Um you can make some awesome, awesome backgrounds. Tag me at Journal Artista if you're posting. Uh, on Twitter or Instagram or hashtag crusty bits. Uh, I'd love to see what you create with this technique. Much love, my friends. See you soon.